Welcome to section 4.1.7. In this section, the main emphasis was going from graphs to patterns and from tables to patterns. And they didn't give us any patterns, so we got to just do whatever we wanted. Now I'm going to show you easy and maybe a little bit harder, but we got to hurry. So the first problem that we did was 459 part A. Now, here's that graph. And basically, we need to go from this graph and draw figures 0, 1, and 2. And I asked you also in class, even though the book doesn't, to write the rule. Okay? Well, let's look at this and let's see what we know from this graph. We know that the bottom, or the X, represents the figure number. And this side represents the number of tiles. So it should be pretty easy to see here at 0, the number of tiles and figure 0 is going to be 2. So I'm going to need to draw something with two tiles. So here we go. This is not very imaginative, but it works. So figure 0 will have two tiles. And then I've got to draw figure 1. Well, to draw figure 1, I've got to know how much it's growing. And so if I'm going to find out how much it's growing, I've got to grow, do a growth triangle. Okay, let's see. If I look, here's a good place, and looks like there's a good place right there to go to. So I go over one, and up, see from two to five, that's three. So I know it's adding three each time. Okay, so figure one, not very imaginative. They asked you to be creative, but I want you to at least know a way to do it there's the original figure 0, and now I'm going to add 1, 2, 3 tiles to it. I'm just going to color in real quick so we know that those are the 3 that I added. That just helps it make it a little bit easier to see what's happening. Okay, let's go ahead and draw figure 2. See, I've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 that I started with, and I need to add 1, 2, 3 to it my figure 2 and there's the 3 I added. I have to be consistent about the way I add them. Since I was adding them on this side, I had to add them on that side again. Okay, the next part, hope I have enough room on the paper, asked us to do the same thing from a table. Well remember in a table this is the figure number and this is the number of tiles. And so I know figure 0 has 14, figure 1 has 11, and figure 2 has 8. So figure 1, I mean, sorry, figure 0 has 14, but I can see that as I go down my figures, each one is losing 3. So that means I'm going to start with one that has 14, and then I'm going to take 3 off of it. I've already taken some time to go ahead and draw one of those. And it looks something like this. I've got 8 going this way and 6 going that way, which is the 14 that it said that I had to have. Okay? So, maybe it would be easier if I put it down under here. Okay. So, what did I do to make my pattern? Well, I'm taking some off. And what I did is this one's 8 and this one's 6. So I know that I basically took off one there, one there, and one there. I'm not going to draw them as boxes because I took them off. Did I do the same thing again when I took another 3 off? Took one off there, there, and there. Okay, I asked you to write the rules on these. And so we're going to go back and look at these two representations to write the rules. Okay, remember from yesterday that y equals the rate of change, which is 3 over 1, x plus the crossing point, which is 2. This one, y equals something x something. In this one, we want to know what the zero figure is. The zero figure has 14 in it, so that's plus 14. And the rate for each one, it goes down here. Let's 
getting bigger by one. This is the same as the slope triangle. So I guess that's a piece of information that we can give you in the one today is that we could see this as the change in X. So this is my change in X numbers. And this is my change in Y. So if I wrote my fraction, it's going to be negative 3 over 1. And that will simplify to y equals negative 3x plus 14. Now, multiple representations. They gave you a kind of a challenge problem and asked you to do multiple representations of it. And those multiple representations, they asked you to find out what figures 1 and 5 would look like if you continued that pattern. They asked you to make an XY table to graph it and then figure out how many tiles would be in figure um, if you had 79 tiles. Um, we did not do it with a calculator. I'm going to tell you that if you were doing it with a calculator, there's just several ways that you could do it. You could put these points in the stat and then basically, so basically go in to the stat button here and edit and put in your, your data points, your X's and your Y's, and graph them the way that we talked about. And then you could come back to Y equals and try different rules till it went through the points. Be an approximation and then you could go to second and table and you'd be able to see your table. I'm going to do um, one that's just a little simpler. So on here I'm just going to make an X and Y table with the values I know. I'm going to 0, 1, I don't know which 0, 1, but I'm going to go 2, 3, and 4. Let's see, this is Figure 2 has 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So figure 2 has 11. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. 19. Well, I see it's going up by 4 for each one that the X goes up. And so, I'm going to try to make a rule on the calculator. Something x, oh, I do know the something x. That's going to be 4 plus something. Okay? So let's go ahead and go in the calculator to our y equals. And let's see. y equals 4x plus 1. Okay, let's see what that looks like in the graph. Okay, apparently the last person to use my calculator has changed the setting for me real quick. I'm going to turn my axes back on. And there's the graph. Well, I'm not sure if the graph tells me much now, but I can go to its table. And I know some values that it has to match. They need to match this. Let's see how close we are. 2 was 9. 3 was 13, and 4 was 17. Looks like to me that all these numbers are about 2 off. So let's go back into our y equals, and let's make it instead of plus 1, maybe make it plus 3. Let's go back to the table, and let's see. Now I've got 2 is 11, 3 goes to 15, and so now I can put in my other values. 0 is going to be 3, 1 is going to be 7. Okay? I would be able to see a graph and I could zoom in on my graph. Um, I'm going to do it by changing the window settings. Um, well, actually I'm not because I don't have time. But I could use my graph to make copy onto the graph paper. Here is the last 15 seconds. Here's what I did. I did all the things they asked me to do and I'm going to show you how I and some of the students saw the growth today. We saw a little L, so here's an L being added, an L being added, an L being added, and that's it.